<laughs> well, uh, welcome back uh, to Sterling Armory's uh, Oak Shop Topology Series. Uh, I'm laughing here because this is my third time trying to record this. Uh, I am in Florida, and if you can hear uh, like a staticky rain sound in the background, it's because it's raining and storming here. Uh, you might you might occasionally hear some loud thunder. That's what's knocked me out uh, offline uh, two times now. So hopefully this time works. Um, so. Today, uh, we are covering, we're going back to group one uh, in the Oak Shop topology. Um, and we're going to be covering the very first type in his books. Uh, so real quick, if you're new to the series, uh, if you want to uh, uh, learn more about the, the overall Oak Shop topology, uh, please go back to episode one. Uh, episode one is a bit longer. We kind of discussed the whole thing. Um, but for this one, we're just going to be focusing on type 10 or, or type X. <laughs> I, I tend to use the actual number. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to be going through uh, descriptions from both books. And uh, and I have a piece here that I actually made. Uh, if you follow the series, but you know that I, I generally prefer to make stuff in the group two or the, or the, this, um, the time period where plate armor is more prevalent, prevalent if I can talk right. Um, but, uh, I think my tastes change every time I make a new piece, uh, I tend to want to make more of that. So, <clears throat> uh, I, I think I will be making some more in group one, um, but we'll see how it goes. So, uh, real quick, uh, the sources that we end up using. Um, so first book is uh, sword and age of chivalry. Oakshot wrote in the sixties and it was his attempt, uh, just a quick summary, his attempt to try to categorize medieval blades. Uh, and taking, uh, kind of picking up where a different topology left off doing the Viking Age blades or Viking era blades. Uh, and then the second book, uh, was Records of the Medieval Sword. Uh, this came out in the 90s, if I remember right. And, uh, there was an update to each of the, or update to the whole topology, including Type 10 that we're looking at today. He has an update to it with a new subcategory in the, uh, later book. And then, uh, I always want to uh, talk about the My Armory website. So Armory is spelt in the British way. So A-R-A-R-M-O-R-U-Y, My Armory, all one word. They have a great resource uh, on the featured content where they, they really bring together all of the Oak Shop topology stuff from both books and display it nicely. So you can click through each of the types and learn all about them. Um, so uh, if you're interested in knowing which book you should get, get both. <laughs> so get both and the my armory thing uh so sword and the age of chivalry is more of a general uh writing from oakshot about his topology and why he did it and what it is and then records of the medieval sword is more of a collection of uh medieval pieces that represent each category so uh today uh is type 10. um i also have some images i'll be showing for type 10s um in in our last couple uh, episodes for in the topology that's gotten a lot of good positive feedback so people seem to really like the images so I'll, I'll keep doing that um, and I mean as I mentioned I also have a piece here that I made um, that I'll be showing so what is a type 10 so from going back to the first book uh, and hopefully I, I just saw some lightning I don't know if you saw it reflecting on me but there it goes again as uh, so hopefully uh, my camera goes and I don't get cut off so what is a Type 10 blade? So Oakshot, and there's that thunder. Uh, Oakshot writes, uh, Type 10 is a broad, flat blade of medium length, about 31 inches on average. Uh, the fuller running the entire length of the blade and then fading out near the last inch or so of the blade. Uh, and the point is uh, sometimes acute, but mostly rounded. Uh, this, the fuller is generally very wide and shallow, uh, but in some cases may be narrow about one third of the blade width. Um, the grip is very short, usually about three and three quarter inches to four inches. And the tang is also very flat and very broad. So basically all of your Viking era type blades towards the end of the Viking era kind of fit uh, in this type 10 ish uh, category. Um, and, and there's, when I say Viking era, that doesn't mean just Viking blades. That means Viking blades, Anglo-Saxon blades, uh, blades in that time all throughout Europe look pretty similar uh, in that broad, flat, uh, wide, fuller blade. Uh, some other characteristics uh, that I, I'm odd myself, and he's talk, he talks a little bit about it, but not too much. 
Um, these type blades are very, very thin, very wide, uh, very little distal taper um, because they're pretty much wide I-beams <laughs> throughout their whole length. Uh, so let's go to the second book. So originally type um, 11, so the next one, type 11 or XI, um, they're very similar to type 10 blades, but they're much longer. And they have a very narrow fuller uh, and they are very they're a lot longer so they usually average 36 37 inches long uh with a very narrow fuller however in the original book there was a lot of type 11s that were also he put in type 11 but they're also shorter so they were averaging 30 31 just like the type 10s so what he did in the second book actually i think he did it before the second book i think he did it on the re-release of uh of the age of chivalry uh he actually creates a subcategory to type 10 called the type 10a and basically <laughs> i don't know if you heard that but that was that sounded pretty close uh please camera stay with me and hopefully i stay online um so let me get going before it gets cut off so type 10a uh in the second book uh, to sum it, sum it up it's basically everything you put into the type 11 category with the narrow fuller but but shorter length blades so blades that average the same average as the type 10s, but with a narrow fuller. And he even says that, you know, so really the only difference between the type 10 and a type 10A is how wide the fuller is. So if, if your fuller is about a third of the blade width or, or smaller, it's a type 10A. If it's wider than that, then it's a type 10. So he even says it's probably not significant enough to make a separate subtype, but he did it anyway. So. That's basically it for the type 10 and type 10 A's. Uh, so let's take a look at some of them. I have some slides. So going back to the type 10, as I mentioned, uh, most of the Viking era type blades uh, fit into type 10. So the famous Ulfberg blades, uh, here's a great example. Oh, the other great thing about this type, which is pretty neat, uh, there is a lot of um, inlays uh and etching designs in the fullers because they're so wide so for a medieval sword type there there's a lot of room for decoration um and that leaves designing and doing blades nowadays it leaves a lot of design stuff open so it's pretty neat um so yeah type 10 uh so a lot of the elfport blades are that way um and then then we'll move to some other type 10s. Now, again, even though the handles are very different, so now we're seeing like the spike-hilted Viking era blades with the, uh, uh, oh, I forgot the name of that pommel. Uh, I'm blanking right now. Um, but that acorn-shaped pommel, what's the name of that pommel? Um, I'll remember it after the video's done, I'm sure. Um, but that's the type 10 blade. Um, and then you can also have type 10 blades where the blade is the same with that wide fuller, very flat, um, but with a more of a wheel pommel and a classic guard as a medieval sword. So these are all around the same time period, 1,000-ish AD. Um, and then all the way over to the right, um, the same type of blade, but on a, a more cruciform hilt, or almost like crusader-like blade, the classic crusader blade. So 11 to 11-ish, 11 1100, or sorry, 1,000 AD to about 1,100-ish uh, is very common for the type 11 blades. Um so then the type uh, 10A um, is essentially, it's hard to tell from the images, but the, again, the only difference is the fullers are narrower. And these tend to be slightly later time periods, slightly, but it's still roughly the same, 1,000-ish, um, up to 1,100. Um, and most of these have a lot, like, well, I can't say most. A lot of them have wheel pommels uh, and then that typical standard cross guard. Uh, so here's some good examples. Now, the one on the left is an interesting piece because it's a hologram blade. And to me, that seems out of place. And uh, I know they believe that's the right time period of that, but I I'm, I feel like that's an older blade. Personally, that's just a feeling. No, uh, <laughs> no study behind that whatsoever, other than the fact that a hologram blade in that time period just seems off. Um, so um, but that, that is Oakshot's classic uh type 10a blade uh the other blades here you see again the a lot of the etching and the inlays and carvings in the fullers which are very very cool um so on that note so on the fullers and stuff I, because i made the type 10 that i have now i actually made and the customer wanted a pretty cool thing etched in the fuller and i was excited to try it 
Uh, I have done it, but it's been a while. Um, so I went ahead and I was using a lot of these images to research how how they did their inlays and, and their carvings and then which direction they did them. And turns out pretty much everyone, I haven't found one that's that's outside of the family yet, but everyone reads uh, starting from the guard down. Uh, and therefore, every time, if you're reading from left to right, every time your blade or your blade would be in your left hand facing you, you could read uh, whatever is etched or inlaid into the groove, into the fuller. Uh, and that goes all the way back to the Ulfbrook's blades. They do the same way. So if you look at the etchings, it's always from the guard down uh, if you're reading left to right, including uh, Ulfbrook. So I followed that in the blade that I just recently made. So let me show that now. Let me switch back to me. So this blade I just finished up. Um, again, is a uh, I used bronze. He wanted a bronze pommel and guard. So this has a very basic wheel pommel, and then have I have the etching in the blade there. Again, the fuller is narrow, runs all the way down to roughly near the edge, and is about a third, a little under a, uh, a third of the blade width. And then I got that etching in there, which is pretty neat. And no matter what side of the blade you're looking at, it still reads the same way. So quite happy with how this blade turned. There we go. That's a little better. Uh, quite happy with how this blade turned out. The blade length is um, 32 and a half inches, so it's pretty long. Um, the pommel, so most blades of this time period wouldn't have a, a, a recessed pommel, um, but we're, we're doing an inset inlay into the pommel. Uh, it's not in there yet, um, but it will be uh, once we get the right coins picked for them. Um, so yeah, so this is our Type 10. Uh, again, I had a lot of fun making this blade, and I think, I keep blocking my face, <laughs> I think... Uh, We'll end up making a, a couple more of these. This particular one is not sharp yet, so it'll be a stage blade most likely. I don't think he plans on sharpening it. Um, but yeah, so that is a Type 10 uh, <laughs> as it falls over. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a Type 10 blade um, and Type 10A, and uh, hopefully that covers any questions on that. And, you know, type 10s are usually pretty obvious. Type 11s are very different just because they're so much longer. And we'll cover those at some point. Um, but I think the next video will probably jump back to group two. Um, but thanks for, uh, for watching. Thanks for joining. Please like and subscribe, all that stuff. I always forget to say that. And uh, again, any questions, please comment below. Uh, the great thing with our Oakshot topology videos is they do have our the most comments so far of all of our videos. So and and likes as well. So. If you can, um, yeah, reach out, share us anywhere that people might be interested in Oakshot Topology and uh, join the conversation by commenting below. Okay, thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you next time.